Welcome, web friends. This is the latest installment of the Slasher Studios commentary. My name is Steve Goltz. I'm along with a very under the weather Kevin Summerfield. Yeah, I am having a little problems with allergies right now, so <laughs> um, my nose is a little stuffed up. Uh, you'll have to bear with me. Tonight, we are watching the West Craven Camp Classic. The People Under the Stairs. Uh, this is available on Netflix Instant. So you guys might be watching it on that. Uh, you guys might also be watching it on the DVD, which that's what our option is. So there might be a little bit of a delay if you pick Netflix versus the DVD, but we're watching the DVD. Hopefully we're going to get a Blu-ray release of this soon from Scream Factory. So yeah, the 1991 box office hits, People Under the Stairs, uh, the three, two... One, press play right now. All right, so it's been a while since I've seen this. It's actually been years and years and years. So I'm actually really excited to, to kind of dive into this one and check it out again. And I, I remember really enjoying it the first time, so I can only hope I I still do, which I'm, I'm sure I will. Yeah, The People Under the Stairs was released at an interesting time for Crave. This is what he was kind of dabbling a little bit into kind of like these fairy tale elements which this i guess does have a little bit of a hansel and gretel vibe which so did west craven's new nightmare which was released three years after this in 94 and i've talked about that movie many times i think it's one of the best horror movies i've ever seen so this was the third picture and a three picture deal that craven had with universal the first two were uh, Serpent of the Rainbow and Shocker. Both of those were mild box office hits. They made just under $20 million. This one was a fairly big box office hit on a budget of just $5 million. This opened the week after Halloween, and it was number one at the box office. And it stayed at the top ten for nearly two months and ended up grossing about $25 million in the United States, which for a $5 million budget is... Not too bad at all. Hmm. Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, um, Wes Craven, as I'm sure you guys know, if you have been listening to our webcast in the past, he's he's a well one one of those directors we we look up to. We um, in any time of need, as far as what movie should I watch tonight, uh, a Wes Craven film is is always an easy pick. Yeah, definitely. So a little bit of background story on this film. Um, Wes Craven is actually inspired to write this film when he was reading about a series of real-life uh, news stories about burglars uh, burglarizing a house. When, it, when the authorities arrived, the burglars had disappeared, but they discovered locked doors with noises coming from behind. And it turned out that children had been locked inside their rooms by their parents, never allowed to go outside. So that was kind of the genesis for people under the stairs. Kind of a creepy tale. And I know Craven's like to do that before. They read Elm Street was also loosely based on a true story. Yeah, that that's pretty cool. I remember um, watching an uh, interview with him and, you know, he, he gets some of his material from, from real life stuff, which is cool. It makes it actually a little bit more creepy, I think. Yeah, very, very weird. I think that of the the movies that Craven's done, I believe that People Under the Stairs is kind of one of them that's fallen through the cracks. I mean, it does have its fans. I remember the first time I watched this, had to have been late 90s. If I had to put a year on it, I would have said, said 97, maybe 98. I watched this... Uh, Joe Bob Briggs, Monster Vision, he hosted. I still remember he gave it three and a half out of four stars. He recommended it, had a lot to say about it. And it actually really kind of creeped me out, even though I was like 14 or 15 at the time. And I'd seen many horror movies up to this point. Uh, it's still, there was something about this and something about this premise of this mad woman, mother son, brother, sister, whatever you want to call them, uh, tried to find the perfect kid and locking the ones that weren't perfect in the basement. It kind of reminds me of that um, Simpsons episode where they, they locked Bart's twin in the attic. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> they had turned off the, that, it, that they had a, 
cut the the bad one yeah. the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot about that <laughs> Treehouse of, of Horror. Um, yeah, that's a good one. So here we got uh, Vig Graves. Uh, one of his first movies, possibly his first. I would have to look it up. I don't think it was though. So the boy fool. He finds out that if he doesn't come up with the money, they're going to be evicted from their house. And, of course, the people that are keeping the people under the stairs are their landlords and their greedy uh, bastards who kind of want to cleanse this area and want to take these people and throw them out on the street to build residential mini malls, condominiums, all of this stuff. And this movie really does play and look at kind of the the haves versus the have-nots. And that's something that Craven's kind of touched on his other works too, is that there's definitely the separation between people who have a lot of money and people who are really struggling paycheck by paycheck. Do you know um I guess in Wes Craven's upbringing, what side of the tracks he was on in that respect? I think that, God, I don't know. I know that his father died when he was younger and his father was abusive and he grew up in a very strict Baptist upbringing. So I would say probably not that well off, but this reminds me of Steve when he's eating. <laughs> I'm getting hungry just watching this right now. How many, how many girls do you have trapped up in your basement? <laughs> Not enough. So have you ever been locked in a in a basement or a crawl space, maybe? Uh, not that I can remember. Just lockers? Do you have to uh, pull out the pellets of the stuff you eat? <laughs> it's fresh. God, this, this is very much of its time. You know, I remember when you would look at, like, movies from the late 80s, early 90s, and... They really portrayed the ghetto fairly realistically. It was pretty dirty, pretty grungy. I know another movie that was kind of around this time that looked at Cabrini Green in Chicago was Candy Bad, which is it's very much like this. I mean, people doing drugs, graffiti, <laughs> the shit, the toilet, graffiti with shit. <laughs> Wild dogs. Have you been to many ghettos, Kevin? I've never been to a ghetto. I <laughs> heard stuff about Cabrini Green. It is gross. It just ugh, dogs fighting. I would not want to live here. How many days would you survive there? <laughs> I I could hold my own. Well, you've had some apartments like this, haven't you? Not this bad. I re I recognize that wallpaper from your house <laughs> and that fridge. <laughs> Uh, so so here, playing Fool's older sister, we got uh, Kelly Jo Minter, who you guys might remember from Nightmare on Elm Street 5 and also Popcorn. She was kind of like with Jill Sholin. She was, she was one of those working horror actresses of the late 80s and early 90s who you don't really hear that much about today, but I, I actually really like her in this movie. Hmm. Yeah, um... Bing Rames, he's a, he's a scary dude, so I wonder... It would have been interesting to know. I'm sure he didn't, but if he would have stayed in character as far as just kind of this badass um, disciplinarian, I'm sure this kid would have been crapping his pants right now. You'd be crapping your pants <laughs> now if he grabbed you. Well, yeah. Um, so here as Fool, we have um, Brandon Adams, who I think he said some horror conventions. Pretty proud of the role. I mean, he did get to work with Wes Craven on one of his very first movies, so I mean... Not much to complain about there. So here we got the backstory of the Graves talking about the landlord and all of these properties that they own in the area. They want to rob. It's kind of their their he's Robin Hood. Hmm. Standing for the rich and giving to the poor. She's got a nice blue shirt on. Very vibrant. A lot of jewelry, too. That was very common in the 90s. And his very 
would you say that's a Hawaiian shirt? Kind mm. of. A Hawaiian silk shirt? There's a lot going on there. Very fresh princess. Yep. So his mom's died of cancer. He's got to find... He's got to get this money so he could save her and then also save their place. Poor mom. Poor mom. Red eyes. Well, they didn't make about her. She looks like... She looks pretty sick. Was this one of those movies that you instantly liked and it take a couple times? And no, I loved you? it right away. I loved how weird it was. Mm -hmm. So they're down to the one daughter, Alice. Obviously, Symbolism, Alice in Wonderland. But she has is friends with her buddy Roach at the wall. And she's kind of the one child left that they've decided, yes, she's going to be okay. She's their little princess. We're going to keep her. Um, what a, Some food for thought. I actually had a, a dream where I was working on a remake of this, and the mom was played by Julia Roberts in my remake. Huh. <laughs> I can see that. Okay. She's what? really scary. Yeah. Do you brush your hair like that? I do not want her combing my hair. Or dressing me. So she notices that the, the fork is gone. Because the little girl has fed the, her buddy Roach in the wall and lost the fork. So she better find it quick. Because she's going to get a beating. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there was just something about this movie for the very first time I saw it. I was instantly in love. There was just, I don't know if it was the fairy tale aspect, just how weird it was. I just, I loved it. So how do you like the dad? He's creepy. They're, they're a good <laughs> combo. Mm -hmm. She likes to sign in her room. Children should be seen, not heard. I think that's a pretty <laughs> good motto. So that's actually my favorite line of the movie is, Alice has been bad. She's been feeding that thing between the walls again. And so she says to her husband to pretty much beat her, but don't, don't bruise her face because she doesn't want to see it. Hmm. So he gets out the belt. See, here I see a lot of you. <laughs> I'm sure there's been, I'm sure you've taken off your belt before and there's been girls cowering in the <laughs> corner. <laughs> no, they're never cowering. Just so scared. <laughs> that they're into it. And they said, don't bruise my face. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from the face. So we got the little boy scout. Not on the face. Who's selling cookies? I know. I think it's candy bars. Yeah, it's candy bars. Mm. Did you ever buy them where they would come to your house? No, I actually just had um, a girl the other day stop over. With Girl Scout cookies? Yeah, or... and I, I passed. Because they were too expensive? Yeah. How much were they? I, I didn't. We, we, I we didn't were, get that far. I think they were like three fifty. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, no, I'll pass. Thanks for stopping, though. I was here when they, that little boy came to your house at like 9 o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Selling popcorn? No, it was a candy bar. Candy bar. Yeah, because remember, I got the one candy bar. They're like, oh, make that. You're like, make that too. And then I'm like, okay, two of the whatever. And they're like, oh, they're out. And it's like, I had to like, be like the relay for conversation. I'd be like, no, they're out of that one. <laughs> it was like the little boy with like his dad. And like the boy, little boy didn't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> At least he got some candy bars out of it. I didn't get any of that. I just had to deal with them. So were you ever on the Boy Scouts? Uh, one year, I think. I just remember making like a boat. Like a derby boat or something. I made a derby um, 
A race car? car? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so he is selling cookies. I was wrong. I'm sure this is what you were like with the girl. Hmm. It's for cerebral palsy. <laughs> At least for a good cause. Oh, <laughs> no, he's holding himself. Is that what happened? <laughs> this is probably, you were probably this woman when <laughs> that little girl came to your house. <laughs> like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> I guarantee this is <laughs> you. Like watch her out the window, make sure she leaves. <laughs> is that what you did? And then you locked the door? I did watch her leave. Did you lock the door right afterwards? No, you shut it. Close the blinds. You like Vic Graves' hat? Yeah, it's pretty cool. This is like around like the the kind of the the second copy of like the Black Panther Pride. If I were gonna if I were gonna remake this the guy who's helping them, I would have that be Keegan from our short film, Teddy. Yeah, that'd be good. It'd be perfect. He may he might have those glasses. Well, he loves snap bags. Yeah. <laughs> nice vest he's got on. Maybe Mike would be Vic Rams. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> Who'd be a little boy, you? <laughs> <laughs> Grab your crotch yeah. with the cookies? <laughs> That's probably what happened to you when you were a Boy Scout. They were like, you come back. <laughs> Steve grabs his crotch too much. You got a restroom I could use? I really got to take a leak. Yeah. So what do you do when service people come to your house? Do they ever come here? No, I, I wouldn't answer the door, though. This would be right here. <laughs> <laughs> do you have like a little door like that on your window? I need to get one. God, she sells this role. She's really, really, really creepy and just mm -hmm. weird. So you might remember both her and the husband. They were on the show Twin Peaks. And that's where Wes Craven liked both of them on there. So that's how they got hired here. You think she's hot? No. I bet she's dominant, though. I guarantee you this is what you were like with that little. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> she got extra eyeballs. <laughs> now this is one of the, we've talked about it before on our podcast. I'm normally not a big fan of our leads being children. And this one we have, two leads and they're both children and it doesn't bug me because I think Craven does a good job of writing them as both likable and believable and I think that I don't know kids are either too whiny or they're too annoying or they're they're just there for comic relief and here I really like both Fool and Alice yeah I really think kids can be very hit or miss and um just the attitude and the overall kind of tone that the kid portrays can really, really, really make or break a movie. I mean, just kind of a, I guess a more recent um, example is um, Bad Grandpa. I mean, they, they had the kid in there who I went in already thinking I was going to just hate him. I thought he was going to be obnoxious. And he turned out to be, you know, very likable. And you, yeah, you felt he, for the kid. Yeah, he might have been the best thing about that movie. So they're breaking into the house. So let's see what other trivia we could come up with for people under the stairs. Like I said, it was a box office hit, made back its budget five times. It took forever for this movie to get released on DVD. I don't know what the holdup was, but I think I got a DVD player in like two, like 1999. And this was maybe released on Blu-ray like 2004, 2005. It might even be a bit later than that. I meant DVD. Um, in 2004, 2005. 
This has yet to get a Blu-ray release. It has got a what well, has it yet to get a Blu-ray release in the states. It's got a region two release from Arrow, and I'm hoping that Screen Factory picks it up soon. They got a lot of exclusive extras for that, so I am excited. This is like I like this movie so much that I'm almost tempted on getting a region free Blu-ray player just to get it. Hmm. Um, a Blu-ray. Yeah, it's always funny. As soon as you say um, Scream Factory, the first thing I, I think of is the artwork. And I try to kind of think of what, what the artwork would be for um, for some random films. and Yeah, there's some fun artwork for the, the Arrow release of this one. So Alice in the original script was meant to be a 12-year-old girl. A.J. Langer, who plays Alice in the film, who's grown up pretty well. She's about 40 now. She's looking good. Um, she was supposed to be 12, but she was actually 17. Sean Whalen, who plays Roach, who we only saw the hands, um, he was supposed to be 15, and he was actually 27 when he got this role. What? Which he does not look at. He pretty much looks the same now. So I don't believe that. How about Hilary Swank auditioned for the role of Roach? <laughs> because of the original script, it was, supposed, it was written to be either male or a female. Hmm. That would have been interesting. It's a lot like Steve's dog. <laughs> Only when you come over. No, the one dog loves me. The other one's a little bitch. <laughs> Your mama sleeps with the cats. <laughs> oh, look at that move. Did he do that? So one thing that we've talked about on our show before, on both our podcast and the Nightmare on Elm Street commentary, is that there's something about booby traps that Wes Craven just loves. He, and all of my favorite movies of his really do in some way involve booby traps. Last House on the Left, this one, uh, what else? Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, they're both like, the like kind of a final act all of it revolves around booby traps. And I think it's interesting. I think it's always fun. And it's always... Uh, fun to see what they're going to do with that. Yeah, it's very good. I mean, he kind of brings out that, uh, I don't know, just kind of a child aspect. And we can yep. all kind of think back to, see, I guess when we were kids. And That's a lot of dead flies. Thought, of, thought up stuff, what, what we would do with booby traps. And yeah, that is a lot of dead flies. So there's something in the walls, and they don't really know at this point what it is. So what a supporter of this movie, uh, kind of a, a little bit of a surprise, uh, Gene Siskel really liked this movie. He gave a thumbs up. Uh, they both pretty much said that this is kind of home alone for adults. Hmm. Uh, Gene Siskel thought that it actually worked. He liked how wild and crazy this movie was. He liked that it wasn't a typical slasher. And he was actually a supporter of another Craven film, the, the one that came right before, The Shocker. Which I was not a fan of that one, but I like this one a lot better. So I'm glad that he he enjoyed this one. What about Ebert? Ebert gave a thumbs down. Thumbs down. Which is Big interesting because the next one after this one was Wes Craven's New Nightmare, which Cisco really hated. He only gave it one star, oh. and uh, Roger Ebert said that he thought that, that was the best of Craven's work. Hmm. Yeah, with, with New Nightmare, Siskel said that it was just an excuse for the same old bloodletting. Oh, Siskel. The house that they use is very cool. I mean, we could only hope to someday get well, a Well, I'm sure cool that house. this is probably a sad. <laughs> the overall, just the, everything about the outside of the house. Right. Um, no, I agree with that. And then, I mean, just the um, decoration, um, set dressing, everything. I mean, it really makes the house like into a character oh yeah this house is definitely a great character it's kind of kind of got that old-fashioned very um gothic feeling which it, it's impressive in the fact that they did this movie for only five million dollars would you be scared if you heard things in the walls and under your I, feet? I would be breaking into this house. <laughs> These people would scare me too much. 
What would you do? I would not. I would stay with uh, Mr. Rames for sure. Well, I think that you'd probably end up being one of the parents of the house. <laughs> We're actually recording this commentary in Steve's basement right now. And I think I can hear kids in the walls. <laughs> Never know. So yeah, one thing that I do think that works about this movie fairly well is that it's got a good, like Steve said, the house is a character. It's got a good sense of atmosphere. This is a little bit darker and dirtier than a lot of Craven's works. They're u they're usually a little bit more polished and I kind of like the 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 feeling of this. I mean, I don't want to say that it doesn't look professional because it does. I mean this definitely looks like a quality studio film, but it's it definitely it doesn't it definitely doesn't have like that scream shine to it. Mm -hmm. It's kinda of cool too. I mean it's you want to I mean, bring out every kind of aspect as far as being kind of dirty and just kind of weird and a little bit odd, a little bit off. So would you go in the basement just to prove that Graves are odd, that you're not chicken shit? <laughs> no, I would not go in this basement, ever. I don't what even know if I would go in the Home Alone basement. Because you're afraid of the <laughs> furnace? That's a scary looking furnace. Do you cut up your macaroni and cheese, like Kevin? <laughs> no, I do not. No. What an idiot. <laughs> that would be burning his finger. That would get so hot. <laughs> Anyone who's ever held a lighter for an extended period of time? He can handle it. Furnace. Which furnace do you think is scarier? <laughs> oh, Home Alone one for sure. So yeah, he hears something down, down in this basement. Kind of creepy, kind of freaky. Uh, so, Steve, this is only your second time watching this, correct? That is correct. That's it's been crazy. A while. I, I probably watch this movie at least twice a year because that's how much I like it. Um, if I were going to do my top five Craven films, I would include this in there. I would also include it. I actually got a lot of controversy. Well, I, maybe not controversy. A lot of people pissed off at me because I did my top five um, favorite horror movies from the 1990s, and three of them were Craven films. This, New Nightmare, and Scream, which I could have even included Scream 2 and made a four out of five. I just think that he's that, he's a very strong, uh, proficient filmmaker, and his movies always look good. They always have a sense of style to them. They always, especially with his, he's good at, he's really good at developing characters. I wish that he would write more screenplays because I always think that he kind of brings us into this world and it's always interesting to watch. He's got a nice band-aid on his thumb so he doesn't burn it. I don't is that where he's touching it as the band-aid? I think that's below it. Nope. So what if they kept you in there? Would you be fine if you just kind of watch TV? <laughs> Every once in a while, they threw down yeah, food for you. I don't need that bad. I mean, I've got TV, I've got food. Well, you're pretty lazy. You don't like to work, so we need to be fine with you. <laughs> what if you were in there with like a lot of other people? It depends what the other people are like. Are they like... You're pooping and peeing girls? in the walls? <laughs> Do you know how much poop and pee would be in those walls? So are they throwing toilet paper in their form or no? No. No. Ah. <laughs> So how did this do outside the U.S., Kevin? Um, I don't really think in the 90s, at least before Scream. Um, horror movies weren't usually released nationwide. If they were released nationwide, it was very limited. I mean, not nationwide, uh, worldwide. 
uh, they were released on a very limited basis. I think, um, if I were to look it up, I think this movie made, baby made five million dollars in all of the other countries combined. It just horror was not a strong market at this time, even in the United States. I mean, this movie made twenty five million in ninety one. And this was one of the highest grossing horror films of the year, which, I mean, nowadays, a horror movie could easily make $25 million just opening weekend. So he finds his partner, dead, trying to be pulled into the wall. Now See, there's you. You just want to watch up. the TV again? Yeah. <laughs> See, just leave the TV there. Everything will be fine. Uh, oh. <laughs> there's Roach. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I remember watching this. It was really late at night. It was on Monster Vision. It was probably maybe midnight. I, I always remember on Monster Vision, they'd play two Joe Bob Briggs horror movies. They would play the first movie, and then they would have what was called Joe Bob's Last Call, which that was kind of, they would play like the the A-list feature first, the, the more important of the two movies, the more popular of the two movies, and I remember I watched that on there. It was uh, Wes Craven's Your Nightmare. And I, for whatever reason, I had not seen this movie before that. And they played this for The Last Call. So it was probably, it was Saturday night. It was maybe by this time, maybe 1 o'clock in the morning. And it really creeped me out. It really scared me. Are you covering your face up with the blankets? No, I was probably kind of with my dog. <laughs> I was probably scared a little bit. My dog Lucky, my <laughs> Cocker Spaniel. Cocker Spaniels are the best dogs. <laughs> I like that table. I like those chairs. Like as we said before, it's got a really good look to the house. Do you want a Rottweiler? Um, I don't know. Anything a little that not that thing would eat your dogs. You have big right dog now. Fan. <laughs> I love big dogs. Gold Retriever. Olive could take this time. Why would you? What do you got against big dogs? Gold Retriever. Gold Retriever is kind of stinky. I think. No, they're not stinky. The at ones all. I came in contact with. What about Kali? <laughs> I used to have a collie. Collie? Yeah. Nobody has a collie. I had a collie. His name was Lassie. <laughs> I really did. So at this point, they're trapped in the house. They see that the couple's coming back. They see that their friend is dead. What would you do? I can get the hell out of there. You can't. They're trapped in the house. You, gotta, you jump out the window. What would you do? Crawl on the wall? Ugh, I don't know what I would do. I would... Yeah, I would probably find some closet probably, or something like, to hide in. the in. corner? No. I would... I would definitely find a closet to hide in. <laughs> you would... You would not go in the closet. You gotta go in the wall. You don't want to go in the closet. Yeah. Uh oh. At this point, he's bigger than they are. <laughs> Some booby traps again. Shocked at the yeah, front door. Yeah, electrified doorknob. With the bars on the inside. Would that be your little dog, Ala? Yeah, it could be. No, that would be your little dog, Sandy. Hmm. <laughs> See if I ever pulled you by a shirt like that? <laughs> oh, you just really stretched the neck out of that shirt. That shirt was cool. <laughs> I actually liked the shirt before that. Did you have that shirt? What's going on with that shirt now? <laughs> How could that dog fit through there? Dogs can fit through crazy little things. Uh oh. 
He's got the same reaction. Good. Dogs are gonna attack. Hmm. Uh, what would you do now? This is exactly what you do. Stay there and do nothing. <laughs> well, you're getting mauled by the the dog. Yeah, that's a mean dog right there. Uh, the direction's pretty good here. It's hard to work with animals and make it believable that he's mm -hmm. really in pain. I, I don't even know how they did this. So those two get shot yeah. to shot the dog. I wish they would have I heard shown going the, out. the dog be thrown. <laughs> There's the dog at the floor. <laughs> get in there, Daddy. Get in there. Get out. Oh, here he comes. Yeah, I mean, they, they do a good job as far as, you know, kind of building a little bit of suspense and adding some action in here and Again, I mean, they, 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 they use the house to their advantage, going up the stairs, um, trying to get out of a window when they can't, different doors like that. So what, cool. One thing that I think works about this movie, too, is that very often when you have a, a house location where most of your movie takes place in, there's not a good geography of where everything is at this house. And I think they do a really good job of laying out this house of figuring out how each room is connected to each other. So it gives it more of a sense of danger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's kind of, it's hard on some movies when you're you're like, okay, we're in this room, and where is this room in relationship to the room they were just in? Like, how'd they get there? And then, the grapes of the closet. What, oh, the, what he's the back in the closet. So you got some silhouette here, some He's ominous got the music. Gun with the scope on it. Yeah. This is what you would do if the intruders broke into your house. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh oh. Fool. Fool is trying to help. I mean, not fool. Uh, Broach is trying to help him. Mm -hmm. Falls off the stairs. They're all the way down. Even turns to the corner. He's pretty happy about shooting him. Hmm. So is yeah, she. He's haunting. Big one. <laughs> so why why do they keep Roach? Why don't they just dispose of him? Because what are you gonna do with it? It causes too many questions. <laughs> Nobody even knows he's there. Just, just get rid of him. That's a good question, but yeah, I I don't know the answer of why they don't get rid of the kids. Maybe because if they were dump with these dead kids somewhere that <laughs> it's just easier to say that they went missing. And if they're missing and kind of trapped in the walls, you know, there's no body, there's no real evidence. That's that's my guess, at least, my theory. Did you ever have a doll like that? I didn't have any dolls. I think you had... I know you had at least a couple dolls. Voodoo you dolls? probably had one like that. Like little voodoo dolls? Yeah. No, I never had any voodoo dolls. She's, you. That's a hand. Hmm. Uh, what do you think about the score in this film? Creepy. Um, I think it works. I think it's just playful enough. Uh, I think that it definitely uh, fits the tone of the movie of being. Creepy yet childish, so I think that it it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I definitely agree. I mean, as we all know, a score plays a huge huge role in a film, and if it's uh, maybe a little too creepy or a little too childish, I mean this this 
film would have a completely different tone to it. So he thinks that he's shooting at Roach because that's the sound that he hears in the walls. And he's shooting after Fool. And so the, the twist right now is that they don't even know that he's there. Mm-hmm. Which I think is, it's kind of, when I was watching this for the first time, I'm like, oh no, when are they going to figure out that he's still, that there's another person in the house? Okay, so Fool enters the super dirty, nasty bathroom, and this is just the epitome of any kind of just gross, disgusting room you can think of. This is much like C's bathroom on a good day. <laughs> is that one of the dolls you have? Nope, that was one that you had. No, you, you used to the... hold them when you got scared at night watching movies. No, that was... With your dog. No, that's probably you now. I guarantee you voodoo dolls of everybody you hate it. <laughs> I guarantee you that you at least have a voodoo doll of your ex-boss. Yeah, I, I wish I did. I might have to make one. So, with the... <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know if you guys have noticed. This is the first time I've ever noticed this. We got Fool, and he's got this, like, white around his hair, like, right underneath his hairline. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's supposed to be dust or... See, there you can't see it. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the bathroom, you can see it all of a sudden. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is. And it, it, it's very weird. It looks like it could be some kind of glue, something that would... Keep those wig, wig sticking onto his head. Wig? Well, and the continuity changes too. When he's out in the hallway, his hair's all dirty. I mean, it's all clean, and then it goes from dirty to clean, dirty to clean. So, one thing that they do with the kids is that they cut out what's ever bad in them. If someone sees something that they shouldn't see, they blind them. If there's something that they shouldn't hear, they cut off their ears. If, it's, if they're talking and they should be talking, they cut out their tongue. Steve, if you were trapped in the walls, <laughs> they would cut off your penis. Cause, what? Because probably as a little kid, you were probably trying to do something with this girl. <laughs> the little innocent Alice. <laughs> and they cut off that pecker and then throw you in the wall. and You'd have a bloody stump. A bloody stump watching your TV and... Um, eating your hands and legs that they throw at I you. Don't, I don't want a bloody stump. I just I want the food, the TV, and just a, a free range on the girls. You'd have free range, or you would have <laughs> anything left. <laughs> you might be lucky if they won't cut it all off. <laughs> just part of it, the tip. Maybe just two of the three inches. <laughs> So here we got uh, the dad, brother, whatever you want to call him, the man, as he's credited at IMDb, and he's in this leather gib outfit with all these studs. Very weird. What I want to know is what was Craven thinking when he came up with this outfit, and where did the costume designer, did the costume designer create this on their own, or did they go to some <laughs> sex shop to pick it up? It's just so many questions. Yeah, it's 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 very bizarre, and the, I I love the uh, the Dutch angle they have here in the this hallway shot, and um, everything about this the scene. I mean, just with him running around the leather suit, just makes it really weird and bizarre. And I mean, you're kind of freaked out. You're kind of wondering what the hell's going on. What was he doing before he put this? But before he came out in the hallway, was he having a little fun with somebody? And then he got his gun. So, Steve, when you put on your gimp outfit. <laughs> Do you find it easy to run around, or do you get do you get claustrophobic after a while? Well, if I had one, I'd be very claustrophobic and sweaty, I'm sure. I don't like that there's only, like, two little slits for, like, the eyes. Like, I can't imagine that you could see very yeah, well. You, don't, you wouldn't even need slits for the eyes. All you need is, like, a hole for the mouth, and you'd be fine. So weird. That, you'd be just fine. I would not wear that <laughs> at all. I can say that I would not wear it. It's too constricting and... Yeah, that's that would not be a turn on for me. Kevin, have you ever fed your cat a hand, human or other? Um, well, my cat. Other than your hand that he claws. That's every day. pretty much it. Like literally, I have 
uh, scars all over both of my hands from my evil cat Clover, who looks just like Church from Pet Cemetery. Uh, he likes to bite at my hand if I'm not giving him attention or if I'm giving him too much attention or pretty much for any reason at all. And that's pretty much the only... I guess he took a taste of human blood and human flesh and he liked it because he keeps coming back for more. <laughs> Are you the only one he goes after or... I'm Does pretty much the only one. Victims? I actually, for the first time in a long time, I actually swatted him today because <gasps> he actually bit Abuse. me. He bit me and he would not let go. Uh, uh, and I swatted him on the butt and he hilarious. hissed at me and ran away. Yeah. He he acted like he was doing absolutely nothing wrong. He he literally, I, he was sitting on my lap. He took a bite out of my, my forearm and just would not let go. Like he just dug right in and it hurt like hell. So I pushed him off, swatted him on the butt, and then he hissed at me around. Yeah, poor cat. Unbelievable. Poor me. Unbelievable. So we have some cops in uh, this film as well, which has been kind of a staple in the uh, the Wes Craven films. Yeah, uh, we have cops in Nightmare on Elm Street. We have cops in Last House on the Left, uh, Scream, and almost always the cops are useless. <laughs> so here, one of the cops at least is a little hunky. Didn't you like the cops in the last house on the left? Uh, well, the one cop reminded me a lot of you, the older <laughs> one that was kind of fat and with the, the glasses. Ones. Well, the other one was stupid, so maybe that one is more, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, once again, cops and crib films are just about useless. They don't... I mean, even in the, the movies that he's directed where the cops... Meanwhile, they're pretty much very inefficient at the end. So here they find the the Bear Scout uniform and they realize that there's the boy in the house. And he's in there with Alice. Uh-oh. Sweet, sweet Alice. You find it weird that he smells it? I I don't find it anything that guy does weird anymore. It's just... It's... <laughs> I it's mean, a if creepy you, thing to like, do, but it's If you not went out to your car him. and you found, like, a Bear Scout uniform that you knew <laughs> that this little boy was wearing, like, a half an hour ago, which you, <laughs> is the first thing you do is smell it. I wouldn't smell it, but I think it was a ethical choice, a creepy choice to do, and I'm, I'm glad they went along with it. The poor dog. I feel like he's been abused. He was, he was probably treated better than anyone else on the set, but... Pretty much what you did to your cat today. That is not what I did with my cat. Yeah, animals have it made on film sets. <laughs> I like that he punches <laughs> out. <laughs> the dog just can't catch a break. It's a pretty cool collar the dog has. Do you have one like that? I wish I did. I can get a leash for you too. There you go. <laughs> Such a good look. <laughs> huh? oh. The damn dog. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how much of an idiot that dad or whatever <laughs> the man is. So, do you feel like you'd be more like Fool or more like Roach? Roach is kind of the hero, you know. That's probably probably me. Or would you be the dad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, slingshot! God, what an idiot! I can see now what Cisco was talking about. What if he's like, this is Home Alone for adults? Can you imagine um, Home Alone if Joe Pesci <laughs> was in like a leather gimp outfit? <laughs> Be a little different, definitely would. And he's smelling like Kevin McAllister's like Christmas sweater. So weird. <laughs> so yeah, the one thing this movie really cheats on is how big is this house? Where the inside of the walls, hmm. there's this much room. I do like the use of like the Christmas lights with like mm -hmm. the kind of like all natural lighting, but it makes me wonder where is that plugged into? <laughs> so. You a couple times in just the last minute, you said how stupid the uh, the man is. Um, the more you watch it, is it 
you think the stupider he kind of gets to you? Well, um, does it get a little tiring for you? No, I don't mind it at all. I mean, this is kind of one of the few horror comedies that I actually really enjoy because it's really, it's really goofy, but it's not mean spirited, and it's kind of an. It, this almost like more than any other Wes Craven horror film. This almost plays like an adventure comedy more than actually the horror. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Has ever happened to any of your dogs? <laughs> No, it hasn't. It's a pretty cool, a pretty cool uh, slide they got in there. So yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of the stuff you just kind of got to go with it. I mean, these kind of weird booby traps, the dog running down on the slide. It's you just kind of got to go with the flow in this movie. So what would you do if, like Roach, they cut out your tongue? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's look, he, he's eyeing full up pretty good right now. He he eats well. I loved. It. Like from the from the very first time I watched this, Roach is always my favorite character. And he'd make me laugh and laugh and laugh. Just the sounds and like the <laughs> oh god, that tongue is so creepy. But um, just the sounds that he makes, the walls and the moaning. I just I always thought he was he was so funny. <laughs> yeah, definitely a, a unique character to say the least. And I think they got a they got it right by casting him rather than. Hillary Swain. Your father's one sick mother. <laughs> Actually, your mother's one sick mother, too. I always love that line, too. Can you imagine a studio like Universal making this movie today? <laughs> it's so bizarre. Yeah, it's it's definitely kind of one of those weird off-the-wall made at the right time. So would that be your outfit of the walls? It's kind of cool. I mean, I kind of look like one of the the Lost Boys from Hook. You just have like the bloody <laughs> spot at the front where they <laughs> cut off your waiter. <laughs> You'd really be mowing in the walls, then. <laughs> <laughs> she sure didn't have a lot of time to make these voodoo dolls of everyone that came to the house. Yep. So yeah, it makes me wonder. Like, did the 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 wife, husband, whatever. We'll, we'll just call it bad woman from now on. But did, so do they eat the people? Because we saw the, him spitting out the bullets. So do they eat the people and what's left? I feel they like they give do. to the people under the stairs? Yeah. They get the good stuff. Some, who who some should be thighs, more scared maybe? of? Maybe some breasts? The dad or the mom? Uh well after him seeing seeing him smell the boy's clothes probably the dad he's probably the one who caught up your wiener <laughs> then maybe he would like use the wiener that's so gross <laughs> was your mom ever like this with you oh <laughs> I feel like she really hit that bucket yeah I don't think she meant. To. <laughs> <laughs> to do that, she she took a hard fall. How is she gonna pick that up with that little sponge? I think the mom's way creepier. <laughs> What's her pale face and those eyebrows? <laughs> Can you see Julia Roberts in this role? Yeah, <laughs> same hair. Those eyebrows are really creepy. Do you have uh, somebody who would play a fool? Uh, today? I don't know. Who who would you cast as fool today? Cody Simpson? <laughs> Cody Simpson. That's what they would do, is they would do like some Disney or Nickelodeon kid. Ross Lynch. Austin Mahone. <laughs> there you go. The fact that we know who these people are is a little creepy. Maybe Justin Bieber? <laughs> That is hot water. Yeah, that's too hot. What if she threw you into that water? I'd try to push her in first. It's that dumb bitch's fault that the, there's blood all over that dress. She <laughs> threw her into it. I believe that water is really hot. <laughs> it looks... They do a good job at making us believe. <laughs> and then she's got that big... It's like a horse brush. Yeah. Yeah. 
Did your mom ever call you a viper in her bosom? Uh, no. You probably were a viper in her bosom, though. <laughs> like Grateful Brat. So, yeah, what was that pit that he threw him in? I don't know. You got so much weird stuff in here. So, yeah, I mean, this is just gets kind of a little, little creepier here, even. I mean, he's just covered in blood. He's got the uh, the gloves on, the apron. Very well, kind he, of he's Texas just gonna... Chainsaw-esque. Look at how red her skin is, how hot that was. Poor, poor girl. What if this these were your parents? I would not like that. You wouldn't really know anything different. <laughs> I want to know how they kidnapped all these kids. Yeah, where... You like that one? <laughs> I don't. With the long hair? It almost looks. Uh, I, I. No, they're weird looking. <laughs> that, would one of these be you? Or would you be smart enough to escape it? You'd be Roach. Yeah. Roach. That's what happens when you don't have... <laughs> like, how long were they down there for? I think they've been down there for a long time. And why is Roach, like, the smart one? Whereas all of them are like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> look at that. <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> Roach's face. At least he's always happy. He's always got a smile on his I've face. I've seen Sean Whalen, who is the, the actor played Roach. I've seen him in a million movies since this. And I always say Roach. Oh, there's Roach. Like, Roach is in this movie. Like, I can't even think of right offhand, like, what all he's done. But I've seen him in a billion things. And he's a really good character actor. It's crazy to think he was 27 when he did this. Mm -hmm. He got shot. Poor Roach. Roach is not going to make it much longer, sadly. But he is here for a plot device right here. He's going to show him the gold coins that he got. And this is when our lead hero, Fool, figures out that there's... Ah, uh, treasure of the house. Ooh, everybody likes a good treasure story. If you had to, so we, we have a dog in this one. Um, if you had to work with a an animal and there is a role in a film and it called for an animal, what what kind of animal would you want? Probably a dog. Work with? I feel like dogs really want to. Um, they really want to please people. I would not want to work with snakes. Disgusted. <laughs> um, Cats are way too independent. Like, if you talk to any director or anything like that, they'll say that, oh, like, for any cat role, they usually be, like, 50 cats. Because once the cat is fed, the cat no longer wants to work, <laughs> which is much like you. <laughs> so maybe you'd be a cat. Because, yeah, the the cat won't perform after he's been fed. <laughs> so, uh, but dogs constantly want attention, and they're I think that they're probably more likely to give the performance that you would need. Hmm. What about you? Yeah, I think as far as just being able to hopefully get the shot that you're looking for and the animal to do what is directed of the animal, I think the dog would, would probably be the best the best trained one at least. Do you like the fact that Majority of the movie is all in the house. Would you have... No, I um, prefer that with a movie like this. I think that it definitely works. I think that we get a good idea of what the house is. We get more of an idea of the house as a character. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad that 95% of this movie takes place in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And the, the whole idea of you know this house becoming a character, that's, that's huge because it's... Oh, I mean, it's just such a big part... Of you know making the film what it is, it's just giving it giving that 
get that added kind of weirdness and creepiness when you you see you know the inside and out of this house upstairs downstairs in the walls all the different booby traps would you shut the fuck <laughs> up i love that he says that. I remember that was my favorite line right in the nuts Oh, he's an idiot. Yes. Are you sure you would be the dad? <laughs> what would you do if you got punched in the nuts and then got a layup thrown out of your head? <laughs> I don't think I'd be that happy. Why doesn't he go in there? He's scared. Yeah. Rip the dress off. <laughs> She's 12. Not really 12. Okay, she's really almost 17 when she <laughs> did this. So they're bur he's burning up Roach right now. So poor Roach. Um, it's going to get hot in those air ducts. Uh, what would you do at this point? You gotta find the quickest opening, and uh, yeah, I mean, the, this is tough because I mean they don't really have much of an escape route out of the house. Yeah, I mean she knows the house a little bit better than he does, but I think that she's pretty much been trapped in her room this entire time. But yeah, I do definitely want to know it at the very least how long she's been in this house because mm -hmm. she must have been a good girl for a long time. I feel like these other ones were bad, and that's what caused them to go in there. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in an event before? I've never been in an event. <laughs> I've never been in an event either. I don't know anybody who has been in an event, but there's so many movies with people <sighs> in vents. Is that I a real e thing? I don't even know events that are that big <laughs> to hold a person. But yeah, how many houses are like this big where you could comfortably walk between the walls? <laughs> He's just shooting, just keep shooting. It <laughs> doesn't matter. Poor house. I I really do like the stuff inside inside the walls. Um just kinda like that. You get that kind of maze. Uh -huh. Maze feel. We're not sure where you are. Um, kind of gives you a little uneasy feel. Take the dog in there. <laughs> the dog in. He's always got good facial expressions too. Yeah, like both the uh, the man and the woman. Um, very theatrical, very yep. over the top, but it it totally works for performances like this. I wonder if the man and the woman are anything like this in real life. <laughs> they might be. I like this how I'm in this room full of all these candles. Like, how long were those burning for and why? <laughs> candles don't last that long. Especially those stick ones. <laughs> well, they're, they're long. They gotta burn for a while. So here we're gonna we're about to get uh the dog dying. Oh, that poor dog. I I love the shot of what he he pulls it out and it just kind of drips with the blood. I always thought that was a good a nice little touch. Yeah, it's very cool. Do you have a sword like that? No. You put on your gun <laughs> and stab things with? I I don't. I don't mind. <laughs> no, I do not have a sword. I love the dog just tilting its head. I think that's actually really cute. Poor dog. It was a dumb dog, though. It did what I was supposed to do. <laughs> so this would be you. I'll probably kill them. <laughs> then 
She wants pro. <laughs> So you don't think that you'd be the dad? I've seen a lot of similarities. I don't I don't see any. Lots. Very strong willed. They killed the dog. Oh. It's his fault he killed <laughs> him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Prince. So they found an opening, or possibly an opening, up in this attic, which the, this is only one of, I believe, two times in the movie we're actually gonna gonna see the attic. But it, it's definitely a, a creepy location as well. Why would you yell? What an idiot. Just jump. Gotta, they gotta get out of there. I don't know what they're waiting for. You could just jump and <laughs> go in the water, would you? Or would you be hurt and be too scared? No. Would you jump? You gotta jump. You would jump. You'd you, be too you scared. You go in the water, just like diving board, jumping off. You'd be too scared. You'd just stay there. No. You're scared of water. That's the problem. I'm not scared of water at all. I'm scared of snakes. <laughs> there might be some snakes in the water. No, not a little garden pond. No, garden snake. <coughs> yeah, how deep would this be for him to fall into? I mean, realistic is probably about six inches. Yeah, he would. <laughs> he would honestly probably end up breaking his neck. But yeah, like that's not what's. He's like treading water in there. Yeah. <laughs> I would run it like hell. Wait, so if you were to escape, would you come back for her? No. No, I just keep going. You have gotta you, keep going. Have you ever shot your gun outside? <laughs> I'm always good shooting a gun outside. I've heard stories of you shoot your gun outside. <laughs> I oh, would she's never... mad now. He's like a little, he's like a naughty puppy. I know she got to discipline him. Does he? He's probably got to put on that gift outfit again. <laughs> yeah, put it on. And she's gonna spank him. Well, not, we're out of the house now. Fool has successfully escaped as of right now. And um, he's back in his apartment with his... And this is enough for them to pay their rent and also for, to pay for his mom's operation to the year 2000. There you go, until the year 2000. Nine years, that's a long time. <laughs> Can you imagine having goal, enough gold to pay for your stuff for the next nine years? So where do you go with gold coins? Do you like go to a pawn shop or do you... No, a pawn go, shop's going to rip you off. You melt it down somewhere, go to a bank? Well, I like think who? gold prices are even higher now than they were back then. It's something like $300 an ounce. And then where, who gives you this money? I don't really know how that works. <laughs> they have those things where you could like bail in your gold. Yeah, that's a ripoff too though. Have you done that? I haven't, no. I don't have any gold. Your gold chains? Yeah. Your 14 karat gold chains and your gold, gold watch? Gold hoop earrings. So here we get the backstory of what this couple is doing and these kids that are going missing and basically they're not good people, which we've, I mean, we've watched this movie for the last hour, so we've kind of. Definitely piece that together. So if I got cancer, would you steal gold coins to pay for my operation? I don't know. That's asking a lot. 
Yeah, you'd be stuck at the wall with your <laughs> dick cut off. Huh? I bet a lot. I bet a lot of those guys in there probably are missing their penis because <laughs> they're probably touching themselves or doing something bad. So, have you ever seen this before? Besides in movies, where there'd be like a trash can and someone's using it for fire. No, like, have you ever seen that in real life? I haven't. No, I mean I haven't been to too many cold weather big cities before, but. Well, you no, saw I don't know. Phoenix, did they use that in the summer? I mean, in the winter? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't even need that in the winter, no. It got like 40 degrees. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm curious because you, you bring up a good point. I mean, you know, we see them in movies, so it had to have happened sometime along the line in civilization where people well, are starting fires and I garbage feel like cans. That's, that's definitely a cliche of movies, whether it's true or not. Like, I, I can't even remember the the last movie that I saw that had a homeless person where there wasn't, and the homeless person was outside and it wasn't an alley with a trash can with something <laughs> in, the, in it lit on a fire. And yeah, the, that street had a couple fires going. And do they even make those kind of trash cans anymore? Those like, those tin ones? I don't, I think they're all plastic now. You, would you be one I've of seen dumb... people with shopping cart, homeless people with shopping carts, though. I've never even seen that either. That's, that's a true, true thing. Do they just steal them? Yeah, they'll just like take them from like Target or a grocery store. What do they keep in them? Just the... all their crap, just loads of like coats and just whatever cans they find on the side of the road. I have had got like guys that dig it through my dumpster outside for um, a little cans and stuff. Yep, I've seen that before. Do they actually get inside the the dumpster? Yeah, I yep. saw a guy inside once. That's too weird. There, when I worked, I used to work <laughs> at a video store, and there was a guy that would come in every once in a while, and he'd ask if we had any cans or bottles that we could give him. That's too weird. I... He he probably came in there like probably like once or twice a month. I still remember going out to throw my garbage away a couple years ago, and then there's somebody in the dumpster, like, digging. Or who knows what. Were they hot, hopeless? No. Just gross, dirty. It's sad, though. Like, that could have, homeless. That could happen to us. <laughs> what if you were living on the streets? Well, didn't... I think you... I had to get in the garbage can once because you threw your keys in there. And you couldn't make it up over the dumpster, so I had to get in there and get your keys. I vaguely remember <laughs> that. Yeah, what were? Yeah, I think I was like throwing away like the my garbage, like it was like caught at like the <laughs> the bag. My keys were. Something, yeah, you had your. The keys in the same hand you were holding the garbage bag. You just threw I just it all threw in it there. All there. Here, she's wearing a nice emerald dress that goes nice with her fire red hair. That's good. She's looking good. He's got a nice sweater vest on. Do you think she's ginger all over? I, I, I'm sure she is. She's got a nice bright, bright red fire crotch. Yeah. You like that? It's all right. Get another dog in the morning to replace <laughs> Prince. They're, they're grieving and suffering to not last very long. So did Fool get the house? Yes, he did. He's in the cupboard. Dun, dun, dun. How did he get in there? I don't know that. How did he get in the cupboard? I felt like they were in the kitchen for the majority of the time. Hmm. And like there was just nothing in that cupboard. It was just bare. No shelves. The, yeah. <laughs> and even that, like that doesn't look very big to fit him. Like it didn't seem like he was struggling to get out. So many questions. So many, so many needed answers. I would not come back to this house. You'd be laying there in your bed sick and I'd be I'd be going on vacation right now. 
my gold coins. <sighs> you wouldn't even pay for Rama's operation. <laughs> You'd be on vacation trying to find some whores. <laughs> At least he was able to change. I was the, thinking the same thing. Some, some chucks on. So we hear the tape recorder, and obviously they know that he's in the house. The tape recorder has played kind of a skewed version of Die Lay Me Down to Sleep, uh, which is a dad to... Uh, Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street, which Nancy said the prayer before she meets Freddy in her nightmares. And the prayer is also spoken in Last House on the Left and Wes Craven's last movie, not last, the second to last movie, My Soul to Take. Uh, the title is the last line of that prayer. So would you be shitting in your pants right now? He's I would. back in the outfit. Yeah, I know. That did not take him long at all to get back into that. Yeah. Well, he, he's been in a lot. So he knows, he knows ah, the easiest way to nice. get in. Ooh, a fire poker. What is going on with the two of them? So where's her leather, leather outfit? That's what I want to know. No, he only has to wear that when he's naughty. Do you have an outfit that you have to put on when you've been bad? No. <laughs> so yeah, worldwide, the movie made $31 million. So it did make 25 in the United States. So it made about $6 million, um, in the other countries. Uh, there was talks for a while. Um, in 2009, uh, Wes Craven made a remake of Last of the Left. Well, he produced it. And it was they were in talks to do uh, remakes to both people to the series of Shocker. But for whatever reason, nothing has come up with it since then. Mm -hmm. Uh, some fun facts. Universal Studios incorporated some of the film's plot as well as the house into a haunted house several times for their annual Halloween House of Horror Nights. Very cool. That'd be fun to go to. I've always wanted to go to that. Um, our, our good friend Andrew has gone a few times and said it was a really good what? time. Yeah. He went last year and I believe the year before that. Yeah, I've been to the... Um... Uh, some of the Halloween nights for, um, or I should say, at Six Flags down in Gurney, Illinois. And they put on a, a pretty good production down there. I mean, the entire park is decorated with, with Halloween stuff, which is which is really cool and a feat just, just in itself. Cause that's a huge park. So what do you think of the original poster for this? You got the skull, and you got like the house with like the, the people of the stairs lettering underneath. Um, do you think it's an effective poster? Do you think it's creepy? I I don't mind it. I think... I love it. Going into it, you might be thinking it's something other than what it really is. It definitely does play up the horror more than yes. the comedy. Yep, and that's what I was just going to get at, too. I mean, it doesn't really... You, you're not going to expect kind of the quirky stuff that you you find in this movie, but the, uh, the poster itself um, visually is really, really good. So I want to know from if there's anyone listening to this that's from the UK or that has a region-free Blu-ray player. I want to know if it's worth getting one just for this release because I'm really excited. Uh, love the artwork that they did for that, which is much more colorful, much more bright. It's got Roach in the center. Uh, really kind of creepy but fun. I mean, actually, if I were to look at the Blu-ray cover that Arrow did, it almost looks like that... Um, Roach is the bad guy. It's interesting that they don't use any of our main, main characters in it. It's mm. the people at the stairs with Roach in the foreground. Yeah, the the uh, the original poster compared to um, that artwork with Roach, I mean, two 
very contrasting um, styles of art there. So they can't jump out there. It's been, there's glass and rocks in there. Oh. So I don't know why it takes her so long to figure this out. Um, she's pretty much saying that, yeah, this is my parents, you know. It, it's it's very weird. I, I don't know if they've kind of brainwashed her or made her think that this hasn't happened. Or that there, there's like a whole prequel to this that I, I would actually love to see. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I mean, just um, to kind of tell the story of how this all all started, who these this man and woman um, really are, where they got this kind of crazy idea about getting these kids and throwing them in the... In the walls and the basements and just locking them up and just where this kind of maniac um, attitude came from. So would you climb down the chimney? <laughs> I don't think I'd want to climb down the chimney, no. Hmm. <laughs> would this be foreplay for you? This could be. You with the leather outfits for a some curl? <laughs> Don't do that. I just love that he just randomly shoots whatever. <laughs> I'd be curious how many shots he fires in the entire film. I'm sure there's somebody out there who knows exactly. Mm -hmm. I love, too, that Fool's smart enough to kind of play along that he's been shot. At least he takes out the mask so he can see he's better. That's a good idea. What, what an idea. Oh, Home Alone right there. Brick. I think that might kill him. I think that would at least put him unconscious. Well, in Home Alone, the guy gets hit like five times with a brick, and he's They would fine. be dead, too. She's she means business now. I always, got this. Her, I always thought this was so funny gun. them falling down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even as a like even watching this when I was a teen, although there were elements that like really freaked me out. Um, I always like I did pick up on the comedy, and I thought this yeah. stuff was just hilarious. Fingers up the nose. Have you ever had someone stick their fingers up your nose? No. Nope. Kaka. Hmm. Who screams that when they're really bad? Kaka! You should I, start I, doing that. Now. I really wonder how much of this was in the original script and how much it was just these two going crazy with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of thinking about that earlier. I mean, they're just so off the wall, the stuff that they do and they, they say in the facial expressions. A lot of this just has to be them just kind of being free with their, their character. Yeah, it would not surprise me if um, Wes pretty much just gave them free reign. It's a little dark. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. So, the remake was in talks. It sounds like it's not happening anymore. What direction would you take with the remake? And what, if anything, would you specifically change? Hmm. See, I mean, when you first said that I'm directly drawn to the man and woman, and because there's such a, a huge part of this film, and just their wackiness i don't know how that would play right now i don't i don't think that they would play up the comedy so much i think that they were 
definitely be a backstory to the man and woman. Like maybe like today, uh, them finding these kids somehow online, like maybe pretending that they're mm. kids themselves, you know, meeting up like for dates and stuff and like kidnapping them. There'd be all this backstory that we wouldn't need, but they would think that audiences today want to know why these people are. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that much more would be the man or the woman. Um, I do think with how strong the violence is that they would probably make the the two, our two leads older mm-hmm. and they would probably force some kind of romantic uh, love interests uh, that that would definitely be forced into the plot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can definitely see uh, some older older kids um, playing the playing the roles in here instead of these these kind of young grade school grade school kids like fool. Fool's got some good one liners in here. He does. You would have thought he would have remembered from before that, though. About the stairs. Yeah, I wonder how Craven sold this idea. I mean, maybe this was just a different time. It's really crazy to think, too, the fact that this movie is 23 years old. Um, Wow. Like, that is just insane to me. I think it, for the most part, it holds up fairly well. Uh, we haven't quite gotten into it yet. The the very, very, very end, I'm not the biggest fan of. I think it's a little bit cornball, but I think everything else is pretty creepy. Okay, good. Yeah, and when we kind of get into your cornballs, we'll, we'll talk about how you, how you would have changed it um, from then on, so... But, um, I don't like how the end of this turns into a music video. Hmm. I'll just say that. Oh, she looks rough. Have you ever had a landlord like her? No. You ever had a landlord like him? No. Landlords were always really nice. I would be scared of her. I feel like you had a landlord like her. What was her name? Like Sarah Crabtree or something? No, she was really nice. <laughs> Nancy. Nancy Crab. Yeah, it was something like Crab. Crab was part of her last name. <laughs> I, I can't remember. The, I don't know if she's still doing realty anymore. She was really nice. She was one of my favorites. The favorite landlords that I've ever had. Um... I've had a couple of asshole landlords. Um, when I first moved to Appleton, my first one when I moved here, oh god, he he bitched about everything. Uh, but for the most part, since then, uh, most of my landlords have been pretty nice. Have you ever thought about buying some like rental units and renting them out? <laughs> no, I'd just be too afraid that I just get some crappy tenants and they just bail on rent and trash the place. Well, and you would not be good for maintenance. <laughs> Do you have to fix the toilets and stuff like that? They call, they call you like three in the morning. No, that is that would definitely not be not be anything I'd want to be involved in. Oh, she just falls right through the wall. Oh. Like, how would you react to that if you're one of those people outside? <laughs> and why does it just run outside? I guess she hasn't seen people in a long, long time, but still, my first instance would be to get the fuck out of there. I like all the, the flashlight movement in this. Uh-huh. Uh, it definitely adds adds to the, the visuals. Yeah, it's a creative use of light. I, I do kind of like it, the fact that you know, based on the based on the poster, based on the title, you're thinking that the people under the stairs are the bad guys, mm-hmm. but they're really the the heroes and they ended up saving them in the log rod. You sure grow out your hair like that. <laughs> I you kinda you've looked like that before on its rough days. 
You know, one of those days when you have to wear claw goblers and you, oh, yeah. you pretty much you like that from not see the sun ever. <laughs> Wouldn't you miss the sun? I, I miss the sun right now. It's more tanning. All this crappy Wisconsin weather we're having lately. With Tanny, that helps with seasonal depression. It probably yeah, helps with these people. Pass. Get some good vitamin D. Yeah, like, I don't understand why, like, their, like, faces are all deformed and stuff, and then, yeah, for the most part, I mean, with the exception of the, the tongue being cut off, Roach looked pretty normal. Well... Yeah, I, I know what you're getting at. Um, but, I mean, just aside from that, I mean, the the makeup effects. We haven't really talked about the effects They're too much decent, here. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, they look they look good there. Um, I guess the hand, when she fed it to the dog, that was pretty fakey looking. No, but I like the, that. But the, the corpse laying in that just puddle of whatever, that was that was pretty cool. You don't like the hand being fed? You thought <laughs> it was too rubbery? It looked a little rubbery. I wonder, like, how they got the... Dog to gnaw that. Just kind of like rub some meat, peanut butter, dog stuff, dog treats inside it maybe. There's ways. So what, so what are, why do they have this robe and why is it down at the basement with the people under the stairs and how much money is there? That's a lot of dough. I would just start filling my pockets up. Mm -hmm. So do any of these... We, we've had a lot of questions so about, about this movie. Did any of them really bother you? Or is it more along the lines of what I said earlier where you just kind of got to go with the flow of this movie? This movie's so wacky, so off the wall, so kooky. It, I really do think that it plays better as a dark comedy than it does a horror movie. So none of it really bothers me all that much. I do like it too. Uh, the f kids are pretty much forced to fend for themselves and they do a good job at being independent and kind of... Uh, oh no, that's never good. <laughs> <coughs> So where is mother, and what is she going to do to protect herself? It's a very cool shot. She's kind of following the, uh, the girl into the, into the kitchen. I love the shot of the mom. Mm -hmm. She's just... She's at her craziest here, which is saying a lot. Hmm. Would that scare you? Yes. I wonder what she was like with these kids. Like, yeah. <laughs> like if she stayed in character or <laughs> I, you know, like this movie was released on VHS. It was never released on DVD. No extras. I think that the, the rigid two Blu-ray release had a ton of extras, and there's there's so much that I would like to know about this movie. Craven always gives a really good commentary, so I, I would love to kind of know the backstory and what's going on here. Would you eat her? I might take a bite out of her. Those those boards don't look very um, sturdy. No, they. Well, I'm sure they've been shot a few times, so they they've been uh they've been replaced. That is, what is going on with his head? <laughs> is that a mask? It was like open in the back. Yeah. I, think that, <laughs> I don't think that we were supposed to see that, or it wasn't supposed to be like that. Grab so yeah, her. They're, they're pretty much, yeah, they're grabbing the hell out of her, and they're out, they're ready to get some revenge. She gets stabbed. It could have happened to a meter lady. Is there, like, 
I try to think if there's one of these creatures or whatever that is scarier than the rest. So the woman definitely has a Julia Roberts look to her. So I can see why you were dreaming about her. I don't know why I had a dream. It was very weird. Um, I don't think if a remake ever happened that we would get Julia Roberts for this role. Um, it, it would be interesting, especially for the man and the woman, like who we would get. I was actually just talking even with a friend of mine the other day that we're kind of running out of character actors today. I don't feel like we have these, you know, I feel like everyone today that's an actor or an actress wants to be a star and they don't want to just kind of sink their teeth into these kind of character roles, which is really too bad. We need a Buck Flowers. Yeah, I love Buck Flower. He is one of my favorites. Uh, Sword of Babes and Slime Bubble Arama, uh, Village of the Damned. I mean, he was he was always good. He, he always delivered a good performance and was lots of fun. So, do you have one of the people in the stars that's your favorite? <laughs> Not necessarily. Maybe Roach, I guess, just because he's kind of. Why would you have dude? all these explosives next to your? It looks like millions of dollars. I like that skeleton. It's very <laughs> like haunted house. <laughs> yeah. Like you would think that there'd still be like some meat or something on there, <laughs> or at least like dried blood or something. But well, the people that upstairs eat it. Pick to the bone. I don't yes, think they're that. so hungry. A lot of money. Got a cool little like science. If you thing had to eat there. a person, what would be the first thing that you'd eat on them? The breast. The breast. What if what if there was a guy that was thrown down there? What would you eat? Thigh. Thigh should have a lot of meat on it. Calf would be really gristly. <laughs> Maybe a stomach. I was like this with the coins. Yeah, just kind of really playing cool. with them. I feel like if he did use that, that, yeah, that they would all die. Like, that's a lot of explosives. At least he knows how to rig this up. In like the 30 <laughs> seconds that he had. This is very complicated. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but it just kind of works the insanity of everything else. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I could have watched this as a kid. Like the, the age fool is right now and just... I wonder how much of a good time I would have had with it back then. This is definitely a almost like a playful horror movie for, um, almost for like I would say like older kids, um, like maybe like I think this movie's honestly, for the most part, pretty fine for like middle school or up. Um, I don't think there's anything particularly awful or bad about it. So the man falls into the the liquid pit of doom, and fool gets up, and there is money everywhere, and here comes the crowd. This is the where, looters. This is where I'm starting. <laughs> this when they go outside and it's raining money, and they're all trying to grab the money that they had. It, it, that's where the movie gets a little too silly for me. Luckily, it's maybe the last two minutes of the movie if that and then we got like this this weird rap song that's do the right thing yeah i don't like any of this like i think it should have ended in the house i think this is really corny um i don't think it works um do you like this <laughs> i don't i mean if all those people are out there of course they're gonna be grabbing the money yeah but do we really need to see this <laughs> Like, I really think that it should have ended with the boy and the girl on the stairs. And they're all just running. <laughs> and... 
So you're fine with this ending? <laughs> I think it's very, it's, like, if it would have ended down, down there, it would have been much more climactic. It, oh, I mean, you could go either way. I, mean, I think if it ends down there, then you're ending on more of a serious note, and this wasn't really all that... It didn't really take Look, itself four like different serious. dogs played Prince. Four friends. A lot of sun coordinators. So, yeah, that was our commentary for the people under the stairs. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We had a fun time recording this and watching this underrated Wes Craven classic with you guys. We will be back next week with a brand new horror movie. Let us know what movies you want us to tackle, and hopefully one of uh, one of your favorites will be on our chopping block next week. Until then, have a good one. <laughs>